Remember those old commercials about your brain on drugs? Well, this is your hard drives on an Intel 13th or 14th gen system. So this is basically not the video that I was planning on making to cover my newest Unraid hardware upgrade. I actually just posted my 12600K video like maybe a week ago, so I wasn't actually going to put together a video on my 14700K upgrade for Unraid for a while. I like testing this stuff out for a long amount of time, make sure I'm happy with it, it's all configured right, running smoothly, before I really post videos. Anyways, I'm running an Intel 14700K in my Unraid NAS right now. I was super pumped about this because it's a crazy core setup. You've got 8P cores with hyperthreading and an obnoxious turbo speed. And on top of that, you have 12 freaking efficiency cores. That is a ton of threads. If you run heavy dockers and a bunch of VMs like I do, this is actually a really nice CPU to have in your setup. And on top of that, you get the Intel iGPU, which is super awesome for Plex and MB or anything make use of QuickSync. So these are really good CPUs in my opinion, especially for the home lab. And before I get any farther, just to be clear, I am not currently experiencing instability or data loss. At least, not right now, not with the way I have my CPU configured. But I did have to make some compromises on the way that this system is set up. Since the rumors started coming out about the instability, and they basically didn't go away, and they really only got worse, then all the beta BIOS news came out, and I think I even saw a beta BIOS for my Gigabyte motherboard, and then it just kind of disappeared off the website. And then the even stranger discussions, in my opinion, about what the correct amount of power to put through these CPUs should be, I kind of got scared and I basically turned off all of the turbo features on my 14700K. I figured without the normal turbo, the Turbo Boost Max, TBP, uh, you know, whatever, Turbo Boost Plus Max Super Awesome, that there wouldn't be any overly opportunistic opportunities, basically for the BIOS microcode or the chip to request way too much voltage and power to go through it. My last video on my Unraid setup with the 12600K was completely focused on efficiency. And when I was running that setup, all I really wanted was a similar amount of compute power to my old 1920X Threadripper server and to really get that power draw down. I succeeded. I got quite a bit of compute out of that setup and I got my idle power usage down to like 50 or 60 watts and my load usage with pretty much all the threads I think was like 130, 140, something like that. So huge improvement. But this version of my Unraid server was really supposed to replace my ESXi hypervisor in my home lab. And it did. I'm not running a dedicated ESX box anymore. Everything is consolidated into my Unraid server. My Plex server, my game server VMs, all of my dockers, the services and stuff, all of that's pretty much running on my newly upgraded 14700K powered Unraid NAS. So it's definitely kind of a bummer that uh, basically since the first week I've had this CPU installed, I've had a down clock. Stock without the turbo enabled is 3.5 gigahertz on the P cores and 2.5 gigahertz on the E cores. So I'm basically missing two gigahertz on my P cores and about a gigahertz on my E cores. Everything works. All my VMs, my Dockers, they all run. They're all processing stuff, although, you know, be it a bit slower. I do a lot of encoding on this server. The power consumption is quite a bit lower, uh, so that's good. The CPU temps, even with all the cores loaded up, basically never go over 51, 52C. So that's also good. But I just have this feeling of being kind of uncomfortable letting my CPU boost into the turbo clocks, since we basically know that it's probably not going to be stable eventually. This is my main NAS, my primary target for my data. I store all of my YouTube footage on this server. I use this server to make money. I have terabytes of my favorite Linux ISOs on here for Plex. I keep copies of all the software that I use and test on here. Basically, if I ever need it again, I don't want to go out to the internet. I just want to have a local copy. I have backups configured from all of my PCs to land here. I really just kind of need this system to be performant and stable. Like, really, that's what I need. Performance and stability. I'm not a big YouTuber. I bought this CPU. I paid 400 bucks for it. I'm a customer. And now I'm kind of left wondering after the last level one text video 
in the Gamers Nexus video, especially about the material degradation, you know, is my CPU just gonna kind of grenade itself one day? If I have a problem with the CPU, is Intel gonna cover it under warranty? No questions asked. I'm not really gonna fiddle around with updating the BIOS and making a bunch of other changes. I'm just not gonna do that. I paid for a product, I want it to work. Even then, if they RMA the CPU, how long am I going to be without my 14700K? I don't know, at least a couple of days, a week, maybe two weeks if everybody's RMAing them. I run this server 24 seven. It is literally never idle, ever. There's always something going on with one of the doctors, one of the VMs, and most of the time, all of them at the same time. What really worries me about the level one text video is that they had such a high reported uh, just instability rate, that's not good. Even if I wasn't using this as a server, you know, I have an expectation that when I buy a CPU, it works. I shouldn't have to fiddle with it, plop it in the motherboard, turn it on, it should work. That's kind of where I'm at with this. I don't really like that feeling of wondering if my CPU is good or not, and having no real way to tell. Even then, the Gamers Nexus video that just came out about the materials degrading, you know, I, I don't know. You know, I wanted this 14700K to last for quite a long time. I don't see any reason why, if the chip wasn't good, this shouldn't be like a four, maybe five year deployment. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, this is what you get. You should have went with the Xeon. Uh, go away. These chips are super, super well suited for people running KVM in a home lab. I, they're awesome. You have P cores when you need it. You have E cores when you need it. You can save a whole bunch of power and you have a whole bunch of compute. And it's really all just super easy to use. It's very slick. You even have the iGPU available, which you can use for pretty much any tasks that requires it. Something like Plex, MB. You could use it for a video surveillance server. You could even use it for AI, I guess. These are really nice CPUs. They are really much better than previous generation CPUs from Intel, if they were rock solid stable. So I don't know, like I said, my data is fine right now. I don't have any corruption. My Unraid server isn't just rebooting randomly, but my CPU is always at stock speeds. I have my shiny 64 gig, 6400 DDR5 G-Skill kit running at default DDR5 speeds, since apparently that could cause an issue too, even though the memory is totally 100% stable on my AMD system. I'm not really sure what to make of this. Does Intel care? I don't know. How quickly are they going to handle RMA requests? Is there actually an issue with batches of the CPUs? I do not know. So basically, I'm not super happy about the situation. It kind of stinks. I do have a backup system. It does run a much older Atom CPU. It's been solid. I back all my critical data up there. It's basically just uh, kind of that feeling that I bought a $400 CPU and it might be dead soon or it might not work right. And I don't really know what they're going to do about it. I don't like that. So I'm kind of curious about all of you out there. Are any of you running one of the i5 or better 13th or 14th gen CPUs in your home lab server? Do you have any signs of instability or problems? I'm kind of curious. I want to know. So yeah, if you're into gaming and home lab content like this, definitely get subscribed to the channel and then click the bell for notifications. Maybe my 14700K will meet the hammer later on. Who knows? If you like this one, definitely smash that like button. That'll let YouTube know to share this with other people. And until next time, try to keep your CPU stable.